We're in Lagos Marina and we haven't admittedly filmed as much as we should have over the last few weeks but we have made our way down here from Porto. So let me take you back to early October as we begin to make our way south. Good morning from Dura Marina. Today is Jasper's first summer sailing school day and the kids are just about ready to go out out of there. Um, excited to see how he gets on today. Excited to have an entire day to ourselves, which hasn't happened in a very long time. It's really weird not having Jasper around. Um, we don't pick him up until about 5.36 p.m. So, and it's only 10 a.m. It's, um, it's weird. You can see the blue sails coming up somewhere around there. The kids are just getting ready to go and having their um, Daria intro. Daria doesn't know <laughs> what to do with herself. <laughs> Sad to say goodbye to Porto. Really enjoyed it here. Met a lot of cool people, a really happening wee place. Jasper's enjoyed it, he's been out sailing with the, uh, the sailing school for two weeks and made a lot of friends here, so we sad to go. Uh, we're definitely going to miss Porto, it's been absolutely lovely, I've loved it here. We've met the coolest people, we've done the coolest things and it's been such a pleasure. But today it's time to move on. We are heading to Aviero or Figuera de Vos, depending on how we get on today. It is around 11 a.m. I'm still working. Chris is going to be sailing today. Yeah, sad to leave, but looking forward to seeing what Lisbon has to offer because that's our kind of next stop. Um, we'll hopefully stop there for a couple of days and then again head south and head towards Gibraltar and back onto Spain into Cartagena where we are booked in for November and December. There's a good kids community there, so we're hoping to meet some cool people, hang out with some kids, let Jasper enjoy a little bit of Mediterranean winter, I guess. Who's that, Lulu? Lulu. So as we left Porto, we went from Porto to Aviero to Figuera de Foz to Nazare, then Nazare to Pinici. Pinici, we went to Cascai. So we were initially planning to stay a little bit longer in Cascais and the Lisbon area and explore it, but... Because of two weather systems, one affecting the UK and one affecting Portugal, we chose to uh, try to push on from Cascais down the, the next hardest bit of the coast. So we, with new weather coming in in the form of an Atlantic system and a North Sea system, we chose to try and use what weather we had. So we went from Cascais to Senez. Then we went Senez to Lagos. It's nice to be sailing and not motoring. The last week or so we've motored from Porto to Aviero, Aviero to uh, Aviero to Nazare, and then Nazare to Pichi, and then motored some more to Casco. It's the first time I've actually sailed in what well, feels like weeks. I think we, we I think we got a six minute sail in coming into Panichi, but it's nice. It's been a little bit kind of cut and thrust to try and get south. But it's getting warmer, the wind's coming back, we're sailing. In the middle of October. In the middle of October. <laughs> <laughs> so for context, about this time of the year in Scotland we always haul out and it 
it means you're probably pulling the boat out of the water on a miserable rainy cold day, 5 to 10 degrees C, and putting her to bed for the winter. Um, and I think we've made the right decision. <laughs> this, this will do me. Are you complaining about the Biscay Crossing? No, no, Biscay Crossing is fantastic. But this is fantastic. This is great. Our Biscay Crossing was as good as it was going to ever get. It's so nice today that you can smell the vinyl burning. this journey we stayed pretty much just one night in most places and Sassimbra was not going to be any different but as we were looking at the charts surrounding Sassimbra and trying endlessly to contact the marina we had a look at the anchorages nearby and we found a pretty little gem of an anchorage where we stopped for just a little bit the little cave. Yeah. We're gonna hide and we're gonna scare Chris. Oh, sorry! <laughs> that didn't quite work out, did it? <laughs> the snails and waggies. And what are they
So here we go, we're motoring down from Sisimbra to Senez and it's been an absolute pea super all day. The beach is literally a quarter of a mile that way and you can't see it. Daria with her coffee. Tea. Tea. And it is just, yeah, what do you think Mimi? Can't see anything, can't see cake, can't see tea, can't see dinner. Or no? carrots. Or carrots, can't see it. Oh well. This is an absolute, like we say, it's called a pea super in Scotland. We've, uh, we've had visibility, you know, stuff comes out of the, the murka about a, a tenth of a mile. Cable. One certainly learns how to use one's radar in situations like this. It kept us safe and it meant it was a gore, but uh, you really do have to keep your eye on it and start to uh, understand what's what. Not sure if you can see it, but there is a vague glimpse of the beach through there. We'll zoom in see if you can get it. There it is. Like, that's the beach. <laughs> well, it's been better to make use of the, the weather that we've got here and uh, manage to track south a good bit uh, while it's flat and comfortable and we can continue to work while we're moving. Um, we have, done, well, we have done no sailing today, we've just motored the entire time. Yeah, we, we motor sail for a couple of minutes, but that's about it. It's just flat. It's, uh, you would never believe we were in the Atlantic in October, middle of October. Uh, it's just no way. It's weird. So this is what it's like having less than 0.1 of a nautical mile visibility on the way into Sinez. Holy moly. Sinez Harbour opens up that way. I am letting the autopilot and the, and the radar do all the work. So we just picked up that there. That was the uh, the boy. I'm letting the autopilot do a route while we keep our eyes open. And that is all the warning we get. Wow. You can actually see the fog in my hands and it's condensing on every surface, it's that thick. Wow! Okay, so stage two, right, let's get in here. So I've got this route that's taking us all the way up to the entrance and I'm looking into the bay on the radar now and get a relatively good idea of what's going on. Got my boy, past my boy. Okay. Got Daria on the bow, so she's got my eyes forward. So the following day, the fog managed to clear a bit and we left uh, Senez for Lagos. And we had a very early start that day. We were up about six in the morning. Um, we did 80 miles that day and we managed to get in about nine, 10 o'clock at night into Lagos. So the Lagos entry was a little bit sketchy, it was low tide, we had about a metre and a half behind us coming into the entrance and uh, we weren't too sure how it would go because uh, we were we had saw, seen notes in the charting that it hadn't been dredged uh, so we um, fortunately that all went okay and uh, we managed to get into Lagos for about 10 o'clock at night. Can you tell the sunny part of the day is done? Gosh! So we arrived in Lagos quite late last night, about 9, 10 o'clock as I think it was and we spent the night on the waiting pontoon and now we're just waiting for the bridge to open 
so we can get to our bath for the next few days. And there's the bridge opening. We have been allocated the N pontoon way out. So we have to um, go on a little mission to find it. So on this coast, there's not many places where you can hide out. So we stayed or we are staying in Lagos Marina until the mad winds that have been coming through the area disappear, which hopefully will be the next couple of days. It's been a while Mad. but we did have a couple of nice days and we went out to explore So as we sit here in Lagos Marina waiting out the weather, uh, please check out our latest video and like and subscribe. That could have been a bit more enthusiastic. What? It was totally enthusiastic. Don't mind. Right, <laughs> till next time. You're going to say bye-bye, Luna? It means like and subscribe.